Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today, we're building a geodesic dome. Welcome to the future home of the Save It For Parts radio observatory here at beautiful Sandland. If you missed my previous videos on the dome project, here's a quick recap. Last September, we went up to Canada, picked up a surplus 18-foot geodesic ray dome from a radio observatory and former NATO satellite ground station, threw it in a U-Haul truck, drove 16 hours back to Wisconsin, and left it in a pile at Sandland. Now it's finally time to assemble the thing. So there's our base. This is as close as we could get to level up here. We're actually going to use some of the playland structure and we're going to build something like a scaffolding. <laughs> we realized if we put it in the middle of the dome and use it as scaffolding, we won't be able to get it back out again once the dome is partially assembled. So Carl's idea here is building kind of a crane out of the scaffolding structure. Yeah, we're making this up as we go along. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. Let it down. Ready to lower you. Since I'm planning a big three-day weekend to do dome assembly, we need to get the monorail ready to sleep in. If you're not familiar with the monorail, we got this from the Minnesota Zoo a few years back when it shut down. It doesn't actually run, it just sits here and acts as our weekend cabin. I've also been storing all the spare dome parts over here at the monorail, so we have all of the connecting plates, the old hardware, um, I've got some new hardware, some newer screws that came with the thing. Now I actually tried to make a couple models to help us with this dome assembly. I found some white HDPE plastic and I tried to burn the exact same uh, dome triangle situation on there and then cut it out. Unfortunately, I still have some issues with the laser engraver. This one warped. Now I did manage to 3D print a dome along with a 3D printed radio telescope and some little people figurines or astronaut figurines to scale. So this is the approximate correct size of a person compared to our 18 foot dome. Unfortunately, this is just a generic 3D dome file. This does not have the direct relationship in triangles and hexagons to our real world dome. So it's just for educational purposes only. This might show up at open source. So if you are coming to Open Source 2024 out in San Francisco, you might get a chance to see some of this stuff at our display. All right, geodesic dome assembly. First day of a three-day weekend. We are off to a rough start. We have already lost all of the half inch by one inch bolts that we thought we had. We don't know if we actually had them, if we never got them. We don't know if they walked off. Um, might have to run to the hardware store to get all of the cluster cap bolts. But um, let's see, we are setting up the panels here. So I have all of my very helpful helpers who I am most grateful for and I will be buying everyone a beer. Uh, multiple beers. Uh. <laughs> That doesn't seem right. We're not sure if this is Canadian inches and there's some inflation or a conversion rate involved, but uh, the numbers aren't quite adding up here. Wow, I'm already getting a weird echo standing in the middle of this. Day one, Friday, 5.30 p.m. update. We have the base section in, all of the base rings, and we need to keep going higher, but we do not have any of the half inch by one inch bolts that we need to put in the cluster caps, the basically the hubs of all these pieces. So I'm about to run to the hardware store and spend a whole lot of money on a whole lot of half inch bolts. A couple of those. All right, while we're out at the hardware store, the guys have made quite a bit of progress here. So this thing is getting more and more dome-like. Of course, it is getting more challenging as it gets higher and it is turning out to be much higher than the redneck crane that we built out of the Playland parts. Now in normal operation, this whole thing would be on top of a tower. It would be a radar dome, satellite dish dome, and you would access it from underneath through 
the tower structure from a ladder, but of course we're just putting it on the ground, so that means we'll have to knock out a few panels so we can get in and out, so we can get our satellite dish in and out. Well, now that we've got the dome about half assembled, we've decided it's time to read the instructions. Personnel engaged in the erection of the ray dome must be experienced riggers working under a skilled supervisor. Erection personnel are urged to exercise caution. If the erection lasts longer than two hours, contact your supervisor. So as we're making dinner at the monorail campsite, I learned a fun feature of new Android phones. If you get a little bit of dust or sand under your power button, it apparently just repeatedly pushes the power button which calls 911. So during dinner, we got some visitors. So I gotta ask, how the hell did you get this? There's a whole YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, speaking, um, we're working on even bigger projects. Oh yeah, we're doing a geodesic dome up there now. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta look this up. <laughs> yeah, it's save it for parts on YouTube. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay, yeah. Thanks, well, you cheers. Guys. Have a good one. All right, it's into day two, Saturday, and we are continuing the dome assembly. So we're trying to figure out what they left us for prefabricated hexagons and pentagons. Uh, we have mostly uh, three, four, three, four, three, fours, and one, one, two, three, four, twos. And I was never good at puzzles as a kid, so we're trying to figure out how those two things go together with an extra mixture of uh, twos and fours as filler. So it's a little bit patchwork right now. We're trying to do this in layers to get everything stable before we go up one more. These are called cluster caps. They're all covered with old adhesive, old paint, all kinds of junk. So we have to clean them up so we can get them back on. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> Okay, hardware store trip number two of the weekend. So our little picnic shelter has come in real handy for having lunch, having food, working on dome parts and whatnot. We got our solar battery bank here to charge all our nonsense, drone batteries, camera batteries, power tool batteries. And uh, we've got our little work area here. What we have not used once is the crane we built out of Playland parts that we thought was going to help us assemble the dome. We spent a whole weekend building this crane, haven't touched it during the entire assembly process. The dome has been too tall, everything has been too awkward, we've just been using ladders, so um, maybe wasted a weekend building that thing, but oh well, live and learn I guess. It is officially dark o'clock, the moon's out, and our helpers have insisted on continuing to help into the night, so yeah, Kyle here's crazy. Do you have a little wrenches, Rich? All right, it is the start of day three, Sunday morning, and this is our current progress. We're getting darn close, but since it's Sunday, a lot of our volunteers have to go home. So uh, Kyle's going back to Indiana this morning, 
Uh, we've already lost a couple people from yesterday. We might get a couple more helpers for the daytime here, but we're not 100% sure. We're just going triangle by triangle at this point, so it's a little bit slower, but we don't want to deal with entire hexagons or pentagons up this high on the dome. We're already at least 14 feet off the ground. We're going to top out at 16 feet, so it's safer to just do the small triangles one at a time. And I am still not used to the acoustics in here. It probably sounds perfectly normal to the camera outside the dome, but to me, in the center of the sphere, there's echoes and reflections coming from every direction, so it's really trippy. So there are a ton of tasks with putting this together. Um, I don't know how much we've seen so far in the video, but in addition to putting in the triangles, we're also putting on these center plates with all these bolts, and these are major structural elements. And then, we have to leave everything a little bit loose to start with, especially these side beams where the two triangles are bound together. Now, in the daytime, it's easier to see where we've forgotten to tighten those down. Like right there, you can see we need to tighten that section together. Um, it's easier to leave it loose at first so that everything goes together, especially in the upper layers, and then we go back later and kind of tighten everything up. And there are over a thousand of these little bolts. So this is a lot of tightening we have to do. We're also supposed to put uh, center bolts in these inside hubs, which we'll probably come back and do on another trip. I don't think we'll have time to get around to every one of the centers today, but they're kind of redundant. This thing is made to survive 100 feet up in the air in Arctic conditions along the dew line or something. So it's definitely overbuilt for Wisconsin, but it's still nice to have it overbuilt, so we will come back in and put in all the structural strengthening elements. We've also rebarred it into the ground, so we have a bunch of thick rebar, I think three foot lengths, all the way around it, and that's going to tie it down to the ground. Since it is a sphere, it tends to shed wind, the wind just goes around it, but if we get a big windstorm while it's open like this, that could be a problem, so we want to make sure that it's tacked down to the ground. Final update, Sunday afternoon, the geodesic dome is assembled. It is not 100% complete because we still have all these panels that go at the vertices. We have not put those on. We're going to need to come back for another trip. We're going to need to come back and waterproof it. But it's assembled. It is a geodesic dome. All the panels are in place and it's looking pretty good. So here it is. It's very difficult to film in here because you can't tell what direction you're looking at. And the audio is still very weird. I don't know how that's translating, if at all, to the camera. And we've got our door. We have to build a door for that opening, maybe make it a little bit bigger. We've got our roof hatch in place. As you can see, we're missing some of the round plates at the midpoints. And this might be the most empty that this thing is for a while before we start filling it with... Well, for now, we're going to fill it with all the extra parts and leftover pieces and hardware cloth and things that we didn't have time to put in, but uh, then we're going to build a satellite dish and put it in here, and yeah, this big empty echoey space will be a little more full. And yes, we do have that many panels left over, so we don't have a full second geodesic dome, but we might have more than half of another one, and we've got to figure out what to do with that. Are we going to build half a dome? Are we going to do something else with it? Where are we going to put these? I don't know yet. You'll have to stay tuned to see that too.
All right, so that is it for the geodesic dome assembly video. Stay tuned to see when we get this operational as a radio telescope or satellite downlink station. And then check out my older videos to see how we got this thing and how we prepped the site, all the other stuff related to the geodesic dome. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future nonsense. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.